Hey guys, what's up? Oh my god, I think they just put in the keys and diamonds that I didn't receive like two episodes ago when I tried to buy them and then I never got them. Then I still didn't have them like a week later the next episode. Then a week, it's been like a week and a half. But I have them now. It's all, I only got 65 though. That's gonna be, we're gonna be able to do like two cool things. I'm not even gonna waste on an outfit. Not worth, not worth. Too expensive. Oh, and I should say their support was actually pretty good. Like, Pretty much as soon as I messaged them, you'd get a response. And then I think I messaged them like, I don't know, 10 minutes ago with a receipt picture. And yeah, they got it to me. So that's cool. Only one thing stands between you and official membership and Kappa Phi Sigma. Scoring a date with James Ashton. Oh, yes. We need to date James this episode. Fuck yes. Kaylin was getting mad jealous though. And then Chris, we've given up on him over it. Over it. Chapter 9, Sorority Ball, Part 1. The morning after your sorority sleepover, you head to Professor Vasquez's office. Office. <laughs> office to update him on your progress. Good morning, Professor Vasquez. Hmm, oh yes, good morning. You notice the empty waste paper basket in the corner of the room and wonder whether the professor's letter to his daughter went out with the trash. Everything okay? You're looking a little down. What? This is how I always look. Guess I can't argue with that. This guy has no happiness. <laughs> We're the only sunshine in his life. Now, do you have an update on the task I set you, or did you just come here to irritate me? Well, I'm on the final challenge. I just have to find an upperclassman to take me to the sorority ball this evening. And what do you want from me? Boy advice? <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> No, I, well, it's a bit awkward. Beck and I, and Madison said that I have to bring James. They were very adamant about it. Really, I have to say, I didn't see this twist coming. Maybe I should hire Beck and Madison as story consultants for my novel. Professor. Sorry, sorry. Regarding James, well, how do you feel about him? Is there something there? I'd say there's definitely something between us. Nothing between us. We're just coworkers. Nothing between us that's any of your damn business. Dang. Ooh, I don't know which one I want to choose. I feel like this guy likes drama, but at the same time, he doesn't like any bullshit from his workers. So I'm not sure if he likes coworker drama. <laughs> so I don't know. I think I'm just going to lie. Really? That's too bad. Oh, fuck. Just then the door opens and James walks in. He stops short when he sees you and Vasquez staring at him. Uh, Everything okay in here? Good morning, James. Do you have a nice suit in your closet? Yes. Good. You're taking Tara Ted off to the sorority ball at Kappa Phi Sigma House tonight. What? That's your reaction? Sorry, I didn't mean it. I was just caught off guard, that's all. I'd be happy to accompany you to this sorority ball. You would? Uh, I mean, thank you. I look forward to it. You can pick me up from my dorm at 6. Great. I will see you then. <laughs> when you randomly go into work and then all of a sudden you have to take someone to a ball out of nowhere. Back at the suite, you find Zach and Tyler in their usual spot in front of the TV, gaming controllers clutched in their hands. Careful, Tara, tit off. Kaylin's in full-on prep mode. Uh-oh, is it bad? She's asked our opinion on, like, 30 different dresses. And yes, they were all totally gorgeous, but I'm trying to focus on kicking Tyler's ass. Oh, you're kicking my ass? The score suggests otherwise, my friend. Suddenly, Caitlin strides out of her room and snaps her fingers at Tyler and Zach, glaring. What? What did we do wrong? Could you use your words, please? Up! Caitlin hauls Zach and Tyler off the couch and starts flipping over cushions. Looking for something? I lost my sparkly eyeshadow palette bad enough and that I can't seem to find the right dress. Now my face is a total disaster too. Let me see. Don't be silly. You look great. You look the same as always. It's the same picture. Yeah, you need that eyeshadow. You look gorgeous. I'm kind of starting to wish you were my date. Oh, play with her feelings. You, you are? Oh no. I Well, I'll no. I'd date her and James. I think that's the plan. I think it's... They're the three romantic interests. I don't think there's any other ones, but I guess we'll find out if there's more. Maybe a little. You're just saying that to make me feel better. 
but thank you. Why would your makeup be in the couch? Abby walks into the living room, looking stunning in a flattering dress. You all stare at her. Oh, Caitlin, were you looking for your eyeshadow? Damn, Abby. What? Why are you all looking at me like that? Because you look hot, girl. Duh. Aw, doesn't she look great, Tyler? Oh my god, that would... I feel like, okay, so they want us to hook up Tyler and Abby, but like, they're... Oh, there's always dialogue where it's just like throwing those two together. It's probably so annoying. Look, she's blushing. Ah, I'm changing. No, don't. Uh, not that I care. What this must mouth idiot is trying to say is you look nice. That dress really suits you. Oh, well. Thanks, I guess. Anyway, here's your eyeshadow palette, Caitlin. It dropped under the cabinet in the bathroom. Sorry, I should have mentioned it before. No worries, I'm just glad to have it back now. If only I could find the right dress. But let's focus on Tara Titoff. What are you wearing to the dress? Or to the dance? To the dress. Hmm, I haven't really thought about it. Are you kidding me? Picking the right dress is everything. With the right dress, your crushes will drool over you and your enemies will be insanely jealous. I guess I better choose wisely. We all know you're going to be the only jealous one, Caitlyn. She's so jealous every time we're with James. I know there's about to be a hot drama. All right, no, we are not spending money. What's the base? Is this the basic one? That's good. Little black dress, that will do. You walk back out of your room wearing a little black dress and heels. What do you think? Adorable. Did you decide what you're going to wear yet, Caitlin? Hmm, let me think. Oh, I've got it. Caitlin rushes into her room and comes back a few minutes later wearing a beautiful red dress with a gold necklace. She spins for you and your friends, grinning. Well, what do you think? It's perfect, right? Right? Yes, yes, it's perfect. The best one yet. Better late than never. Do you like this one, Tara Titoff? Let me see. It's definitely you. You look amazing. We all look amazing. Let's fucking go. Caitlin smiles even wider and pulls you into a tight hug. You're amazing. Oh my god. I know. <laughs> oh god. Just then the doorbell rings and the door to your suite swings open. Did someone order too handsome? Oh. Are we interrupting? Caitlin pulls away from you as Darren limps into the room. James right behind him. Nope, not interrupting anything. How are you? Can't complain, especially when my date looks as good as you do. Looks like this guy's got moves on and off the field. <laughs> Oh my god, that's me right now. Sorry we barged in here like this. James told me to wait, didn't you, buddy? Yeah, I did tell you that, buddy. James walks over to you, his hands in his pockets. You catch him glancing at your dress. Hey, Tara Titoff, you look nice. That's it, really charming, James. We're both doing this for Vasquez, remember? I did remember that, actually, but I appreciate the reminder. I mean it. So it's going to be like that, huh? I can tell this is going to be a long night. Only if you play your cards right, buddy. <laughs> Sat, cool, with the color commentary. Where's your date, Abby? Darren, I thought Logan was going to come. Oh, shit! Yeah, about that. He ate like 70 eggs yesterday and he's still sick. <laughs> uh, why did he eat 70 eggs? Gains? Oh, my God! <laughs> Ditto. That's all he said. I know about the fucking gains, you guys. I know about the fucking eggs and the gains. Maybe I could be your date. I mean, I'm not really doing anything. Oh, look, Tyler. Grown balls going for Abby finally. Ten years later, no one else had to do it for him. Except hanging out with your best bud, Zach. Zach, please. <laughs> okay. Just kidding. You two should totally go together. They can't. She needs to bring an upperclassman. Oh, fuck. Oh, this is so annoying. Well, don't worry about it, Abby. Just stick with us. I don't know if Beck and Madison will let you in. Just stick with us. Maybe they'll let it slide. And if they don't, bye. Well, I don't want to be a third wheel or anything. Just bring him. Wait, just bring... Oh, whatever. You won't be. Yeah, no worries. If anyone asks, we'll say your date just went to get drinks or something. Really? Yeah, why not? I like this guy, Tara Tadoff. Nice catch. 
Yeah, I think I'm starting to like him too. Oh no, Kayla's gonna be like, Wah! I can't say I expected that. Hey, I didn't get all dressed up just to watch you two flirt. Let's go. After a short walk through campus, the five of you stand outside the Kappa Phi Sigma house in the soft light of dusk. Darren offers Caitlin his arm. Oh, thank you. Let's see if anyone's home. Darren walks up to the front door and raps sharply, his other arm firmly linked with Caitlin's. Darren! <laughs> <gasps> oh, God. Darren, so glad you could make it to our little soiree. <laughs> And you've brought Caitlyn. I have to say, I wouldn't have guessed that you were her type. <laughs> I don't know why I gave her that voice. I think I'm just going to not do that. Yeah, we're going to like go back in time and pretend that never happened. What is that supposed to mean? Nothing, of course. Come on, the dancing just about to get started. You all file in after Darren and Caitlyn. Becca leading a winding path through the throng of guests. I thought it's a thong of guests. Yes, all the thongs of all the guests. Take them off, put them on the table. So far, so good, Abby. Just keep a low profi profile, you'll be golden. I hope you're right. Becca taps a fork to her glass to get everyone's attention as Madison cues up a romantic R&B playlist. Welcome to Kappa Phi Sigma's first official ball of the semester. Darren, Kaylin, would you like to open the dance floor? Uh, we'd be happy to. Here, take my hand, Kaylin. Oh, uh, Okay. Abby leans in close to you and James while Darren leads Caitlin haltingly across the dance floor. Is it just me or does Caitlin seem actively disinterested in Darren? Maybe we should get out there, alleviate the awkwardness a bit. Are you asking me to dance? I might be professor's orders, you know. Right. You step out onto the dance floor and James puts his hand on your waist. You clasp your hands behind his neck and smile up at him. Oh, shit! Hey, James. Ready to get this over with? You can stand closer if you want. Oh, sure, why not? Wow, show a little enthusiasm. I could still change my mind. James pulls you closer, a wry smile tugging at the corner of his mouth. Damn! Kind of don't think you will. James gracefully leads you across the dance floor. You know, you're kind of good at this. Thanks, I have some experience. My parents used to drag me to charity balls and formal events all the time. Dancing was always required. Wow, sounds fancy. More like incredibly dull, but at least I picked up a trick or two. He lifts your hands, leading you into an artful turn. Very nice. Wait right here, I'm going to get us some drinks. What a gentleman. As James walks off toward the beverage cooler, you spot a familiar face through the crowd. Ugh! I knew it was going to be him. I knew it. Huh, what's that? No one doesn't look like anything to me. Abby leans over and whispers to you. Wow, Chris isn't exactly my type, but he definitely knows how to wear a suit. Yeah, but I'm over him. Eh, it's just the same old candy bar and a different wrapper. I guess you have a point. Just then, James returns with your drinks and you stand on the edge of the dance floor, trying not to look at Chris too much. Becca pushes through the crowd and wraps an arm around Chris. Come on, Chris, I want to dance. Oh, sure. I feel like he doesn't even like her, but she just, like, controls his life. Like, what is he even doing? That's why it's like, no, I'm over you. Becca drapes her arms around Chris's neck, shooting a sly look at you out of the corner of her eye. You okay, Tara? Did I kind of went away for a sec. Sorry, I just, let's dance some more. Sure, whatever you want. You and James step back onto the dance floor while Becca leans her head on Chris's chest. What should I do? Focus on being with James. Rub it in Chris's face. <laughs> I kind of want to rub it in Chris's face. Oh my god. Do it! Ah! The evil part of me hit it! You catch Chris's eye over Becca's shoulder and pull James closer. Are you sure you're okay? You seem a bit distracted. I'm totally focused, I promise. Kiss me. <laughs> oh no! What? Kiss me! No! James obliges, leaning down to brush his lips against yours. Oh, you're so butthurt. James pulls away a bit and stares at you, suspicious. Too late. You look away from Chris and James turns to see where you were looking. Oh, no! <laughs> we may 
<laughs> oh no i know i didn't want to do it you guys but the evil my thumb was like shaking and the evil part of me was like cause this drama cause drama I don't know what's going on here, but I don't I don't want to get be involved. I'm not in the habit of letting people use me tear it off. I wasn't using you. I really did want to kiss you, but I, you know, can multitask. Shit. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have let uh done that. I just well it's complicated. My evil thumb. I don't even tap things. Oh shit, I didn't read that. I don't even tap with my thumb again, too. I tap with my pointer finger. But like my thumb was shaking, it presses the evil options. Like I can't control it, it's a different person. James, can I borrow Tara Tid off for a second? Oh God. Why are you asking me? She's an adult, You can make. she can make her own decisions. Thanks James, but I'm sure Chris didn't mean it like that. I'll go check on Abby, if you need anything, just let me know, okay? Okay. You turn to Chris as James sets off across the dance floor. Well, shit, we ruined it. So what do you want to talk about? There are just some things I want to explain, but not here. Well, I'd like to talk somewhere more private. There's nothing to talk about, Chris. I'm not wasting my diamonds on you. Chris looks taken aback, then regains his composure. I just want to make out in front of you. Are, are you sure? Yes, that's all. I did what I wanted. Yes, Chris. I'm sure. I'm good. Fine, that's fair. I just I wish things had been different. That's all. See you around, Tara Tadov. Yeah, you too. I mean, see you. <laughs> you watch Chris walk away from you and return to Becca's side, and a heavy weight settles over your heart. When did things get so complicated? It's not complicated, girl. You lean against the wall and take a deep breath, then pull out your phone to dial Zach. Hey, Tara Tidoff, what's up? How's your fancy ball going? Not so great, Zach. Not so great. What's wrong? Oh, just stuff with Chris, I guess. I wanted to make out with James, but I also thought I could make out with James and rub it in Chris's face and that it would work out fine with both of them. But then it just stirred some shit up and I didn't even drink enough. And this sucks. Well, you know, I'm happy to talk boy drama with you, but isn't Caitlin there? I'm sure she'd know just what to say to cheer you up. You know what? I think you're right about that. Oh no, what if she... I was gonna say we can have her eat our pussy in front of Chris, but like, eh. He'd probably be like, oh, that's hot. I'll see if I can find out where she disappeared to. Go for it. Just make sure to fill me in when you get back. Will do. You head back inside and search the cap of ball for Caitlin, finally spotting her leaning against a banister. A wave of relief washes over you as you speed walk over to her. Huh? Why does she look so sad? Bum, bum, bum. That's the end. No, I'm just kidding. Let's go. Let's go. Continue on. Continue. I have keys for days now. Well, 31. Close enough. Close enough. Oh my god, you guys. I almost had a heart attack because I wasn't recording. But then I realized... The program has a thing where you can go back in time and save your record. Well, it wasn't recording, but you can pretend you were recording or whatever. I have it saved. Jeez, I almost died though. I was so scared. It's the worst when you realize you're recording a video, but then you weren't. Chapter 10, Sorority Ball Part 2. At the Kappa Phi Sigma Sorority Ball, you walk over to Caitlin and lean against the banister next to her. Hey, Caitlin, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Weird night, huh? You would not believe the drama I'm dealing with right now. James and I kind of had a moment out there, and Chris saw it and wanted to talk to me alone, and now... You notice Caitlin studiously not making eye contact with you, her gaze drifting across the throng of partygoers. Are you sure you're okay? Caitlin's turns to look at you, a tiny crease between... <laughs> Sorry, Tara Tittle, I just I don't know if I can hear about this right now. What? What do you mean? <laughs> it's always all about us. We never care about anyone else's. Well, we do care about some people's issues, but I feel like we always blow Caitlin off and we just bitch to her. I never mind. It's too hard to explain. So what happened with Chris? What should I do? Tell Caitlin about my talk with Chris. Press Caitlin about how she's acting. Forget about Chris. What's going on with you? You seem upset. 
I don't worry about it. I just feel like, ugh, this is way too hard to explain. Can we just drop it for now? Okay, you know you can tell me anything, right? Yeah, sure, anything. Just then, Darren returns from the kitchen with an old-fashioned in one hand and a lemon drop in the other. He hands Caitlin the lemon drop, and she takes a grateful sip. Hey, Teratidoff, sorry, I would have gotten you something if I knew you were hanging with us. And if I had a third hand. Oh, don't worry about... Caitlin suddenly grabs Darren's sleeve with her free hand, cutting you off before you can finish speaking. Darren, do you want to go for a walk? I bet the stars look great tonight. Is she trying to make us jealous? <laughs> sure, let's do it. See you around, Tara. Right. See you around. More confused than ever, you wander across the dance floor to where James waits, talking to Abby. Hey, Tara, turn off. You okay? You look a little... Befuddled, bothered, bewildered. Yeah, something like that. Maybe a dance will cheer you up. Certainly worth a shot. One sec, James. I want to talk to Tara alone real, real quick. That okay? Sure, she's all yours. Abby pulls you aside, smiling brief brightly. What do you want to talk about? I just want to say James is awesome. He's been really sweet to me all evening. He obviously likes you. Oh my god, I thought... I knew he was going to go walk over to her and then all of a sudden Abby was going to fucking like him. I knew this was going to happen. I could feel it going like I could feel just like I felt the gains plus he's super hot but I'm sure you've noticed that yeah he's definitely a nice guy but I'm not sure how into him I am boyfriend material hear that Abby cool glad you agree just wanted to give you my blessing okay thanks Abby much appreciated just wish I knew what was going on with Caitlin have you noticed she's been acting kind of distant yeah I feel like something is going on with her where'd she disappear to anyway she went for a walk with Darren. Maybe we should try to listen in on what they're talking about. If we don't go now, we might never figure out what K uh, secret Caitlin is keeping. Oh, yes, Snoop. Worth. <laughs> worth. Totally worth. We're doing this for our friend, not because we're nosy or anything like that. We're nosy. She's our friend, but we're nosy. You don't have to convince me. Hopefully we'll learn what's up with her. You and Abby sneak out into the garden of the Kappa Phi, Sigma house, and hide between behind some bushes. Nearby, Darren and Caitlin sit on the lip of a fountain, looking up at the stars overhead. Why aren't they talking or making out or anything? Shh, they'll hear you. So, I know you didn't actually bring me out here to look at stars. You do? I'm perceptive like that. I can tell something's bothering you, Caitlin. What's up? Why'd you brush us out of there? Ugh, it's complicated. Just stupid emotional stuff. I love stupid emotional stuff. Listen, Darren, I really appreciate how nice you're being, but I'm not really looking for a boyfriend right now. Uh-oh. I know that. Capify Sigma always makes their pledges find an upperclassman to take them to the ball. All I'm trying to do right now is help you with whatever's got you down, okay? Okay, well, if you're sure you want to hear about it. I'm sure. The truth is, I'm crushing pretty hard on one of my roommates. I told her... Myself not to, but that didn't work, I guess. I wanted to tell them how I feel, but I'm scared it'll ruin our friendship, you know? Whoa! This is major! Wow, Abby. Really had to get that out of you. I think they heard us. Yeah, I wonder who it is. That's rough, Caitlin. I haven't been in that exact situation, but I have been in a similar one. My take on it is this. If you can't tell someone how you feel, then your friendship's already in trouble. I know it's scary, but I think you should just come out and tell them. Are you sure? Positive. Besides, they could be feeling the same way. You don't want them to be to the confession, do you? That's an interesting way of looking at it. I'm a competitive guy. So, you feeling any better? Much. Good. Let's get back inside. I think Beck is planning an announce to announce which pledges got in soon. After Darren and Caitlin go back inside, Abby turns to you wide-eyed. Holy crap, I wish she'd said who she was crushing on. Who do you think it is? Me. I mean, uh, it's obvious. It's pretty. Caitlin's pretty obvious. And I mean, we've like made out with her like accidentally like 10 times already or something. I don't know. There were a few scenes there where they like made out for the professor or something. I don't really remember. You know, I wasn't sure if I should say anything, but that'd be my guess too. Really? Totally. You two have been close since day one. And after that game of truth or dare the other night. Oh, it was truth or dare. We weren't making out in front of the professor. We were, oh, we were acting out a scene in front of James. That's right. 
<laughs> For some reason, I turned it into Professor Vasquez asking us to make out for his novels. <laughs> that would have been hot. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. So, how do you feel about her? You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. I feel the same way. I just don't know if I'm ready to tell her. Need some time to figure this out. Don't feel the same way. YOLO! You told Abby you have a crush on Caitlin. That's great, and you should totally tell her. Just then you hear the music switch off in the sorority house as everyone gathers around Becca and Madison. I know I saw most of you guys are rooting for James and Caitlin. I think Caitlin's probably winning the support of the comment section as of now. But then James, and then a lot of you just thought Chris was pretty basic, so. Uh-oh. We better get back inside before anyone notices we're missing. Sounds like they're going to announce who made the cut any second. As the clock strikes midnight, Becca clinks a fork against her champagne glass to gather everyone's attention. Ooh, they're about to announce who got in. Hey, Kaylin, back from your walk? Yeah, sorry about earlier. Turns out I just needed someone to talk to. Happy to be of service. Oh, great. Everything okay? I'm not sure, actually. Nervous about getting in? Are you just doing this for Vasquez, or do you really want to be part of Kappa Phi Sigma? To be totally honest, I'm starting to see the appeal. I'm pretty pissed at Vasquez for making me put up with this. It's been okay. Free booze. They definitely know how to throw a party. <laughs> I'm quiet down, everyone. The moment you've all been waiting for has finally arrived. Becca and Madison retreat into a back room and return to holding tall, thin candles topped with flickering flames. The time has come to announce which of our remaining pledges will become full Kappa Phi Sigma sisters. Oh, I can't wait to find out. Don't you already know? Well, yeah, but I forgot. Oh my God, Madison. Anyway, the pledges that we've decided to accept are... Caitlin! Oh, I knew it! Yes! Congratulations. Anyone else, Becca? Hmm, let me see. Nope, that's everyone. What about Tara Tidoff and, and Abby? What about them? Caitlin, it's okay. Actually, it's not. I'd like to hear which of your insane standards I didn't live up to, Becca. Oh, Tara Tidoff, don't make me humiliate you in front of all of our nice guests. Please, go right ahead. Frankly, after watching you two over the past few days, you and Abby simply aren't Kappa Phi Sigma material. And this little performance you're giving is certainly proof of that. You glare at Becca as she continues listing your and Abby's shortcomings until Ka Caitlin clears her throat. Oh, shit. Uh, Becca, could you maybe shut the fuck up? Excuse me? What did you just say, Pledge? I said shut up and I'm not a Pledge anymore. Yeah, she's a sister now. <laughs> I love Madison. It's not what I meant. I quit. What? I quit. I don't want to be a part of this anymore, especially if it means being around you. Caitlin, you don't have to quit for us. I know I don't have to, but if the alternative is putting up with this brat all the time, it's an easy choice. Ah, oh, boo. You're not really leaving, are you? Good riddance. See you, never losers. Right back at you. Oh, Caitlin abandoned Kappa Phi Sigma for you and Abby. You, Abby, and Caitlin stride out of the sorority house and out of Kappa Phi Sigma forever. Caitlin throwing one last look over her shoulder. Regretting anything? Maybe a little. I was really looking forward to all those parties. We'll make sure your birthday party this weekend is extra special, okay? It'll be way more awesome than any party Kappa Phi can throw. <laughs> I feel like we ruined... We ruined it by, like, messing with Chris. Uh, I don't know. Maybe she would have never accepted us, but it made it seem like it was a choice. Up ahead, James and Darren walk side by side, an affable silence between them. You catch Caitlin's eye. So, are you going to tell us about your walk with Darren? Oh, oh that. I had a feeling you'd ask. Darren is so hot. Maybe, but I have my eye on someone else. Caitlin flashes a mischievous smile and quickens her pace, falling in step with Darren. He puts a friendly arm around her. Hey, Caitlin, feeling better? Big time, thanks again. I know you probably didn't expect to spend all night talking, but... Hey, I get it. Sometimes that's what you need. When are you going to tell her? Soon, but I'm kind of enjoying having a secret. Is that bad? 
Abby rolls her eyes and suppresses a snort. You two deserve each other. James hangs back to talk to you, and Abby speeds up, leaving the two of you alone. That was pretty rough back there, Tarotodov. How are you holding up? Take a wild guess. Yeah, I know that can't have felt good. Unfortunately, getting rejected is the least of your worries. Vasquez is going to be pissed. But I didn't even want to join Kappa Phi Sigma. Vasquez just made me rush because he wants drama for a stupid fucking story. Fuck! But the drama was, the drama was pretty fun. The snooping was real fun, too. You know, I'm starting to feel like this might not be worth it. Between you and me, I do think he asked a little too much of you this time. I'm glad I'm not the only one. I just hope he's happy with my essay. You sigh heavily and look out over the moonlit campus, your brow creased with worry. Otherwise, I might not be attending Hartfeld much longer. Oh, shit. That's it, you guys. Stay tuned next time. So things are, well, things were heating up between me and James, but now they're a little bit cooler because we were sketchy a little bit. Um, God, he'll get, it's, I think he'll get over that one. He'll get over it. And then things are heating up with Caitlin and we'll see what happens next time, guys. Don't worry, you don't have to wait that long for the next episode. I got my keys and my diamonds now. Yes. Bye guys.